Has life ever just punched you in the face? Or maybe it was a person. Has a person punched you in the face? Well, needless to say, if you do get hit in the face by life, maybe even if an actual person punches you in the face, you have to dust yourself off, get back up, and keep it moving. That is what not only I have done throughout my life, as you guys know, my license to live tales. This is what our guest coming on the show has done both literally and figuratively as a part of her career here. So we will get into that right after we finish this introduction. Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. Welcome to this episode of License to Live. I'm your host, Dr. Jared Patton, and I am and I am here for your journey today and every day you choose to listen to this show. Simply go to your favorite podcast player and hit subscribe when you find License to Live. And while you're there, give me a rating, give me a feedback, let me know what things you want to hear about on this show so we can keep it going just for you. Now, it's been a long time since I've uh, been in, you know, maybe slapped in the face. And we talked about Will Smith and Chris Rock and their slap back in episode 88, I believe that was. And we know what kind of drama that goes on. And even if you look at the news today, that drama is still going on. But we are going to talk about getting knocked down and getting back up. And I can't wait to introduce you to our guest who is coming on the show today, right after we finish thanking our sponsors. Mm, something smells good. Hey, this is Dr. Jarrett Patton. Do you need more positivity in your life? No matter what part of your life you want to transform, positive affirmations can help you achieve your goals. But sometimes making permanent changes can be difficult. Designed with you in mind, License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will inspire and equip you to become the best version of yourself. License to Live, daily affirmations to rebuild your life will set you on the path to changing your mindset, beliefs, speech, and ultimately your actions. You can change your life now by getting your copy at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your finer book retails, or LicensedToLive.com. That's LicensedToLive.com. Hey guys, this is Janae Noonan, and I'm here with Dr. Jarrett on License to Live. Hit the subscribe, follow the journey, let's go. Remember folks, if your CME money is disappearing at the end of this year, Get out there, use it up now, get eight and a half CME credits, go to license to live.com. Well, folks, you've been waiting for it. You've written out these commercials. You've written out just what the heck am I talking about? Because I'm always talking about stuff. You guys remember me talking about my journey, walking along this cliff, trying to get my toes to the edge of this cliff, but I just couldn't do it because I'm afraid of heights. But these are the things that we have to challenge ourselves to do in order to get ourselves into that next phase of our career. And today, 
you are going to hear some incredible stories from our guest today. She is two-time world medalist, gold medalist in the world games, and a four-time best-selling author, Janae Noonan. Let's welcome Janae to the show. Hey, guys. <laughs> So glad to have you on the show today, Janae. I mean, you know, I know you're so busy doing so many things. Just taking a little bit of time to talk with us today about your career journey is going to change some people's lives. I know you've you've written some books. You've done so many things in your career. But, you know, we started off the show talking about getting punched in the face and someone who is an MMA gold medalist in the world games multiple times i imagine you've been punched in the face a time or two is that correct yeah i've been punched um probably more than i'd ever like to admit (laughs) (laughs) you don't keep a count of that do you You don't have a hit count or anything like that do you no uh and quick funny story is my very first first ever fight i got in the ring and the girl hit me and i turned to my coach and i was like this bleep hit me and he was like she's supposed to and i was like oh yeah that's what i'm here for <laughs> i forgot i signed up to get punched like <laughs> well, well t- let's start there let's talk about what it takes to be an mma fighter that's something that i've never been able to look at in my life and and, and even understand what it would take in order to go through the training or even go through that process to make the decision hey maybe someday i want to be an mma fighter so where did that decision making process start with you Okay, so like how deep in psychology are we getting today? Because um, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm 20 years and now removed from the career. And um, so we can go back to the beginning. And I was 20, 21 um, when I first started training. And I, to be completely honest, I just was a 21-year-old female who loved the attention because like, I'm just being honest, like there's nothing but men in this sport. And then there's this cute little 21 year old and all the guys were like, Whoa, you're pretty cool. And I was like, Oh yeah, I like this tension. So I was a super athlete. Um, I had soccer scholarships to pretty much anywhere I wanted to go. So like it was, I just got really good, really fast, um, due to being athletic And that was back when like MySpace, really dating myself, just came out. And (laughs) I I, I had like a million followers. I was one of the first um, like super influencers. I hate that word, but it was like MySpace came out. I got a bunch of following. I was getting a bunch of attention from fighting and it was awesome. Um, And getting punched in the face was just collateral for the awesomeness of all of that so that's just the honest truth <laughs> looking <laughs> back on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that was a, a big, a big start for you because, well, you said, I've always been athletic. You were a soccer player by training. You, you kind of grew up doing that, but you transferred those athletic skills into a completely different sport. Uh, yeah. you, you could obviously still use your footwork uh, as many soccer players do, but then you had to add the handwork uh, yeah. as well in order to get to that. And, and you succeeded on really the highest level as you're battling in this ring with all types of people coming from all different spaces. And uh, you were highly successful very early in your career. Um, It it makes me wonder, did you ever have any setbacks in in that part of your career? Um, So 2004, um, right at the beginning, again, I'm dating myself, if you're going to do the math on this, um, I uh, very, very badly hurt my neck. Um, I separated something or other like well, for whatever reason the exact terms are not coming to my mind but I was never supposed to I wasn't supposed to be able to play soccer again like my neck was just I was about to cuss my neck was just effed and um <laughs> so the doctors were like you know find something else to do with your life and being 24 at the time I okay I'm a redhead and uh redheads are fiery 
And you don't really tell a redhead what to do. And if you have, you probably have experienced getting punched in the face. So uh, <laughs> it's all coming back. <laughs> yeah. So the doctor's telling me that I need to like get a life and I need to do this and I need to do that. And I'm just like, have you met me, bro? Like you just challenged me. Like you just gave me the challenge I need to shove it up your face in your face and, and compete again. So 2004, 2006, sorry, 2006 to 2012, six years. Um, I started training again and started climbing that ladder. Mostly it took me six years. Cause I, I at the back of my mind, I was scared. Like, what if the doctor's right? What if I like get hit one more time and I'm dead? <laughs> like, that was always in the back of my mind. And, um, in 2012, my coach was like, let's go get a second opinion. Let's go get new x-rays. Like, let's go see where you're at. Or you need to leave my gym because I'm tired of your little whiny, little scared booty being here. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so uh, we went and got second opinions and uh, no doctor cleared me. Come to find out that no doctor would because they'd be liable. Um, but one doctor was like, well, your neck does look decent. And decent was enough for me. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> Wow. So, uh, yeah, I, I went back. Um, so yeah, I had a very debilitating injury in 2006. Um, that was, was supposed to be career ending. Tell me this, like if, if you were, you know, having this very significant injury, lots of doctors listen to this show. So they're all trying to figure out the diagnosis. They, they got you covered. Don't worry about that part, but, but they, but, but, you know, for you to one, have the courage to come back after that, that neck injury, and then having the ability to do it. I, I mean, what, what were you thinking? I wasn't just kidding. Um, <laughs> pure stupidity. No, um, you know, I, I made a joke about being a redhead, but I want to live my life on my terms. Like I don't like, there's never going to be somebody who tells me what I can and can't do. But just imagine my life during 2020 when the government was like, don't do this. Whoops. Anyways. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> somebody yes. like bad joke, but um, it was, it was more of a determination that I'm going to live my life by my own terms. And I made it, and I did talk about how I fought for the attention, but, and then I made this thing about how deep in psychology I had, and, and I've since worked through all of this, but, um, I needed to constantly prove myself and I needed to prove that I was good enough and who I was proving that to, I don't really know. But, um, so I needed to prove to the universe deep down to myself, deep down to those demons, I don't know that I could come back and that I could do it and that I was strong enough and, and it, nobody was going to have that control over me. So my, my why was to prove everybody wrong. My why was to show everybody I was strong. My, my why was this deep down desire to live by my own terms and, and be awesome. Um, I wasn't ready to give it up. I wasn't ready to give up fighting. I wasn't ready to give all that up. And I didn't know who I was outside of it. I didn't have an identity outside of that. And then, um, yeah, so that was who I was. I had like, yeah. So I just came back and, um, in 2012 I made team USA and I went to the world games and won a bronze and everybody was like, oh my gosh, like you've got the best story in the world. You won a bronze medal. And I looked at them and I was like, it's a freaking bronze, dude. Like, I need a bronze. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? This bronze medal is bronze. And everyone's like, there's 55 countries. Like you just came here and got a bronze medal out of 55 countries. And I was like, here you go. You take it. If you like it that much. Like, yeah, I don't so, want that one. I want the gold one. I want the gold one. And then, so that was 2012. And then 2014, um, I was helping a wrestler train and I, I'm really good at judo and she's really good at wrestling. And you know, if you know, judo's the, like the counter to wrestling. And so I was just kicking the crap out of her. Every time she shot in, I would throw her. And she got really frustrated and somehow like went aggro and dumped me on my neck. And it was like, I thought I broke my neck again. I was like, oh my God. 
but I could move. It was just a panic. I was like, ah, it happened again. Oh my God. But it turned out it was like my collarbone, my three, I mean, you guys are the doctors. So what are these? The three something or other. And then there's like some ligament that attaches it, that that was all just gone. My shoulder was like hanging off. It was dislocated. Uh, wow. And then the doctors were like, okay, now you really know you're done. And I'm like, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this time I was determined I wanted the gold. So 2014, I got injured in February, spent all year rehabbing it. Um, 2015, still rehabbing it. 2016, regained my spot on the team and won the gold. Credentials verified. That, that's amazing. And congratulations. And thank and you. All you fire starters <laughs> out there, I want you to listen to what you just heard, because there's a couple of great gems in here. And one is the mindset of a champion. I mean, OK, if if if, if I could go into the world games and pinochle and come back with a, gold, a bronze medal, that would be success for for most people and say, you know what, this might be the pinnacle of my career and I'm out of here. But Janae, she simply said, you know what, that's nice and all. But, you know, here, take that one. Let's use it as a paperweight. Let's get back to making something even bigger and better happening and, and come back with that goal. That's my yeah. ultimate goal. And you didn't stop till you got it, even yeah. with these two different injuries happening at two different times, but they were both significant and severe injuries. So part of it is regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of what's going on in the ring, regardless of of maybe something that that that's bad or not even intended to happen to you, you have to move on. And if there's something you want badly enough, it's going to come your way. You just have to keep working at it. And you hear this from every champion that we've brought to this show. It is a, a specific mindset of a champion that they will not stop until they reach the top. And Janae, I, you did that for sure. I want to add something to that. I don't want like the bronze medal to be like a throwaway. My mindset was I recovered and I got to the world games and it wasn't the bronze wasn't good enough. To me, it was like, I got here. I, I recovered from my injury and I got here. Why not get here? Why not go for gold? Like I was never supposed to get to that level. And so it wasn't like, Oh, just miss the bronze. I'm like the bronze was a, a, a jump start. Like I can, I can get here and I can, I can compete at this level. And I'm good enough to medal let's do it. Like, let's go get that gold. So it wasn't like, Oh, this isn't good enough. It was more motivation that I am. I did recover and I recovered enough to medal. Let's continue this and let's get that gold. Like it, it wasn't just this, whatever, this throwaway, it was more of an, like an encouragement and incentive that I I'm there and I can do this. So I'm Yeah. <laughs> And that's and that's there because you you knew you made it that far, like even to get into the world games is a significant achievement to many, let alone coming away with any medal. Um, and you've come back with multiple medals as a result of your hard work, your determination. And if whether it's that redheaded, fiery <laughs> spirit that makes you just keep going uh, or just even the way you are uh, yourself, it it's made uh, you've made tremendous gains over this and, and never stopped. Yeah. I, I am. Um, and I want I just want to bring up one other thing that, that you said, because this is also something that many people out there suffer with. And it's that identity because back in, in, in that time, everybody saw you as a championship fighter and championship fighter was your title. Uh, you know, it, it almost could have replaced your name. A lot of people go through this in their jobs, in their everyday lives. And they say, hey, wait a minute. You know, my title is a doctor or, or a nurse or an MMA champion. You know, this is what I identify with. And you put that above everything else about you, because let's face mm. it, Janae, there's a lot more to you than simply just winning some fights in a ring. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so I, <laughs> I love that you said that as, as looking as a part of your identify because your identity, because everybody put that identity on you mm -hmm. and 
when you hear it time and time again, you start to forget those other parts of you. I think that's what made it so easy for me to, I'm, I, I'm almost 40. We'll just throw it out there. And there was a time where getting punched in the face was no longer what I wanted. I, I don't want, I don't want to get punched in the face anymore. <laughs> and my co and, and most of my friends were MMA fighters. I still have really good friends who are. Um, and it was like, everyone was like fighting and fighting and fighting again. And it wasn't me anymore. I didn't have, I didn't have that fire. I didn't have that drive. I wanted to, I have a garden now. I have a sustainable garden. And I, I just, I mean, thank you. 2020. I made the joke about that, but now I have a sustainable <laughs> garden and I have chickens and that's who I am now. Um, Excellent. And it's like, I like it. Like I had to be okay. Letting people down. And that's fine. Like you want me, you, you want me. And, and if I, and if, and if we think about this logically, my friends wanted me to go get punched in the face more. Thanks guys. Like, yeah, I was really good at it. And I hope, and I hope pay a lot of their bills. I'll say that much too, but it's like, if you, if you break it down, my friends are disappointed that I'm not getting hurt anymore. My friends are disappointed that I don't have bloody noses and black eyes. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. absolutely right. Other people are looking for that and they're like, boy, I want to see you keep getting punched in the face time and time again. And you came to the point you said, okay, I, I don't need this anymore. This is not for yeah. me anymore. And I, I think you nailed it too. As you mentioned, like people get stuck. Like they, I have a friend, um, he was a doctor and it didn't, like he didn't like having to prescribe medicine that he knew was making people sicker and he didn't want to do all this. And, and his family was like, Oh, your doctor, your doctor, your doctor. And he took his shoes off. Literally now he's called the barefoot doctor or whatever. He took his shoes off and is exploring the world barefoot because he thinks being barefoot is healthier. And it took him like his, he, he said, he said that his soul was dead and he needed to be authentic. And I think a lot of times um, a lot of times, like people, like we're talking about identity, they get stuck in it and we forget humans have literally evolved. The world evolved from the beginning of time. We're allowed to evolve ourselves too. And it's like, we forget to give ourselves that permission. And if we, we've naturally done that. If you think about your high school time, some of you guys were, some of you guys are still stuck in high school, love you to death, but you're not a high school football player anymore. But <laughs> When you graduated high school, you became a college student. When you became a college student, you became whatever profession. You naturally evolved. Why do we get stuck? Like, we're like, okay, now I'm in a profession for the next 55 years. Like, that's like, crazy. To me, yeah, to me, life was never about that. Like, even when I was a fighter, I was still a model. I was, I was so like, I never let, and I actually take that back. I did get put into the fighter bubble, but I never let that just be me. Like I was a model. I did runway. I, I did whatever the bleep I wanted to do. And people were confused. There's still articles about me that are like, Janae doesn't know who she is. No, buddy. I know exactly who I am and I'm going to do what I want. I'm sorry. It confuses you. Like, exactly. Um, yeah. Like, I'm going to grow a sustainable garden. I'm going to get a school bus and convert it into a tiny home and travel the world. Like to me, life was, I was going to be damned if I spent 40 years doing one thing. And like, unless I was passionate about it, like I do love jujitsu and I'll probably do jujitsu till the day I die. Um, but I've joined the circus. I've, you know, like I, Yeah. I can go on talking forever about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, because but, but that's true. Do you hear how she unpacks some of those layers? And that's what we're encouraging all of you to do out there is unpack some of those layers. Because sometimes if you get fired, sometimes if you get if if you get displaced, sometimes these things happen in your life and you can't say, well, oh, that's the end of me. Might as well pack it up and 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 this 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 journey is over. No, that just means there's some other chance for you to 
to go out there. You heard the word evolution used. You heard Serena Williams talk about evolution. You heard lots of people say that life is about evolving. It's about Mm -hmm. growing. It's about getting better. And you know what? Things that applied to you yesterday may not apply to you today and probably won't apply to you tomorrow as you continue to evolve. And that's and that's one of the, the biggest things. So with you having, you know, such a championship career, battling back from injuries, you know, and living the lifestyle you want to do because you know what you want to do. You say, hey, if I'm going to start this garden, I'm going to do it. If I want to raise some chickens, I'm going to do it. If I want to go do something else. Yes, you're going to do it. So with all of that being said, have you ever been dissed before? Um, okay. So you can Google me and, um, and I hate saying that, but like there's people on the internet who just find it like to take a piss out of me. Sorry. I'm hanging out with an English person. That's very English of me to say, but like they, like my gold medals are fake or that I haven't competed in a legitimate competition or my books aren't real or like you read these articles and you're like, you, all you have to do is one more Google search to realize that all you're just hating on me. And yes. there's this one per- yeah, there's this one person who every November, and I haven't heard from them this November. Um, I actually know who they are now, which is exciting. Um, I got to, um, I don't need to spill that beans because they're probably going to listen to this, but I know who this person is. And um, now I get to laugh, um, but they will every, every time my name pops up somewhere, they will run to the internet to talk crap about me, bro. You spend that much time, that much time on me. Thank you. <laughs> really? Anyways. Um, so yeah. So, you know, she was like, don't hate. right. Being a strong female in a male dominated sport has left plenty of, I don't say room because it's messed up, but I've gotten, yes, new, like, and I, I remember like when I first started happening, like people were talking crap about me. My coach was like, you're on, you're on people's tongues. You've made it where people all over the world are talking about you. And I was like, Oh, I think about that, but couldn't they be nice? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> couldn't they be nice? Like, why is it? Why is it? And he was like, because they're jealous of something, or they're envious of something, or you're you are representing something in them that they wish that they could be doing, or they hate something about you because they can't do it themselves. And it was like, thank you for that wisdom. And it's like every time I get I get hated on, it's usually by somebody who is in their basement. Yeah. With the yeah. keyboard. <laughs> like <laughs> they have the Twitter fingers. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, um, I have I have a motto where I I try something challenging a year. So like 2020, nothing happened because 2000 no 20 actually take it back. 2020, since I got on lockdown, I converted the school bus into a tiny home. That was my try something new. Excellent. Um, and then I did triathlons and I competed in a triathlon in 2021. And I'm supposed to climb Mount Kilimanjaro this year, but for health reasons, it got pushed to next year. But it was like, every time I do something new, that person who disses me has to like, oh, she did a triathlon, but she only, she only did the half one. She didn't do a real one. Um, she's climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, but that's, that's a walk up mountain. That's not a real mountain. It's like, bro, get off the couch. (laughs) Right. Get off the internet, get off, get off your butt and just go do something else. Stop worrying about me. If you know, if you, if, if, if you're my number one biggest fan, because you you just trying to get my attention, you know, keep on hating. There's going to be plenty of hate out there, but guess what? You're not going to stop me from living my life. Right. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. And I know like every time, like I mention him, he kind of like, you know, goes to Reddit. Oh, she mentioned me. She clearly knows I, cause I like mentioned one of my things that I don't pay attention. And it's like, he, Oh my gosh, she mentioned me. She clearly pays attention. It's like, Bro, you're a little cheaping, bam, 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 bam. like you're the little <laughs> annoying dog chihuahua in the corner. Like, I don't want to talk shit. Sorry, that's not who I am. Yeah, but, yeah it's like, get out of here. We don't need that. <laughs> right. So, yes, I've been dissed. Um, haters are going to hate. They're going to hate. I'm still living my life. <laughs> and you are living a life. <laughs> yeah. So, and by the way, the more people talk about me on the Internet, 
thanks. The more my name's brought up, thanks. Like exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take a little, you know, free free pu- publicity. Why not? If you want to talk no, about there's something. No, like, what is that? There's no such thing as bad press. Like that's right. <laughs> right. Go ahead. <laughs> Say we. I'll take it. Just bring it on. It's all yeah. good. <laughs> Doesn't even bother me because guess what? What, 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 what was your best crop in the in the garden this year? My kale, actually. Ah. My kale turned out. And I have like, I have a, a really good yield of potatoes. Look at me using those words. Yield. Yeah, oh, you sounded yield. like a farmer here. <laughs> I have a good yield of potatoes. Um, if, 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 if for whatever reason we're on like total lockdown or we don't have food, I can feed me and the neighbors for six months. Like, I'm good. Yeah, look at yeah. that. My ch- I have 12 that. chickens. I have 12 eggs a day. So my, my dogs are eating good. Like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. See, it's a part of living that life, bringing something that brings satisfaction to you. And, you know, forget about the hate because there's going to be people that don't like what you're doing for whatever reason. They're just not going to like many times it's jealousy. Many times it's driven by something else. Sometimes it's just chaotic. And at the bottom line, who cares? Because you know what? If they aren't adding something positive to your life, if they aren't giving you some good energy in your life, then it's something you don't need in your life and you just continue to move on. Yeah. Actually, I want to clarify that because sometimes people are like, oh, if they're not adding good stuff, sometimes criticism and in a positive way is definitely needed. So I'm very thankful that I do have a team. I've got coaches who will gracefully not criticize, but reminds me, Hey, you're kind of slacking off. Like I had like a a few health problems this year. Um, I got my hands, uh, bitten off by a dog literally because of the scar, but like, yeah. And it took me six months and a bunch of medication and some steroids to like get better. And then I got bleach poisoning, bleach intoxication poisoning. And that took a bunch of steroids and like, I gained some weight and my coaches were like, and I couldn't breathe to go to the gym and I couldn't work out. So like, they were like, you know, when, when you can, like they the, they were not criticizing like, Oh my God, you're fat. But they were like, when you can, and they were graceful on that. And then, but I know the second I get back to the gym, it's not going to be a pity party. It's going to be like, let's go. Like Time you're helping now, but yeah, you got to go to work. So it's like people and, and people have a hard time hearing criticism. Oh, you're hurting my feelings. Oh, this and that. There is criticism, productive criticism that you need to grow. And if you don't have positive, loving, caring people who are willing to say, Hey, you're slacking off. Hey, you're messing up. Or like if you set a goal and you have somebody keeping you accountable on that, that's love. But for whatever reason, we're just like, Oh my God, that person's like hurting my feelings because they're like telling me like I'm not doing it or like whatever. I'm totally, I don't know why I'm talking that way, (laughs) but (laughs) like we, we do need that healthy accountability in our friendships and our peers. If, if you, if you, there's a saying, if you're like the, the smartest person in the group, you're not in the right group. Or if you're the most successful person in the group, you're not in the right group. Like you need people who are going to graciously and nicely encourage you along the way. Um, and, and sometimes it's criticism and I don't know why we went on that tangent, but, Oh, cause you said positive. Well, sometimes, yeah. sometimes it doesn't sound positive. Sometimes you're like, <laughs> Oh crap. I am messing up or Oh crap. I am slacking. And we need that group. No, you're absolutely right, Janae. Uh, and and really, you described exactly why everybody should have a, a coach. I mean, you, you a coach is going to be someone that will tell you like it is. They'll tell it to you nicely and uh, and then use it as a constructive criticism to make yourself better and to build yourself. And and you go through that repeat cycle time and time and time and time again till you reach a championship. And many of us do that time and time and time again. Give me some feedback. Give me some give me some things that I need to work on so that you understand what to work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's that's a that's a, a great relationship and a great reason to engage with a coach and a coach of any kind. And we'll get get back to our conversation right after we finish thanking our sponsor. 
The time is now to refresh your career. We help doctors, lawyers, executives, and VIPs refresh and restart. Dr. Jarrett's coaching helps you build confidence, gain more credibility, develop more leadership skills, and gain clarity in your career path. Want to climb the executive ladder or branch out on your own? We'll put your career in overdrive. Visit drjarrett.com and sign up for your free strategy session. Well, we're back. We are here with Janae Noonan, two-time gold medalist in the World Games, MMA championship fighter. And as I understand it, you have a background in child psychology. Yeah, I do. Child development, child psychology, um, behavioral modification. Um, I hope parents realize their kids not bad. They're just crap parents. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, I'm putting it out there. It's it's all there. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Parents are doing a great job. No judgment. <laughs> That was terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you know what? I think that's a part of of what it was going on. And, and you know, I have a whole nother line on the Who's Badass Kids are those books. And, and I do a podcast on another channel. And these are some of the things that we talk about all the time because, well, the kid is going to be the kid. The kid is going to get away with whatever they can get away with. But it's really that parent that has to come back and, you know, say, OK, they're going to let their kid just go unchecked their entire mm-hmm. life and not have any boundaries. We may know where that may end up uh, or, you know, let's negotiate this and figure out some ways to, to be a better parent. So I, I can appreciate your background, uh, you know, quite a bit. And, and I know that's led you to to write several books. What got you interested in writing books? Uh, my first book, Fighter, Living Life Like a Champion. Um, I was doing a lot of public speaking at the time, and it was in 2014 when I got hurt. And I couldn't train, and my arm was strapped to my chest. By the way, that whole book was written with one hand, but I guess if you're using a computer, that's fine. But uh, my <laughs> arm was strapped. It takes twice the time. Yeah, it does take, because I feel like the Bible, like, <laughs> seek and you shall find, like, right. Bible typing. Um so my first, <laughs> my first book, Fighter Living Life Like a Champion, um, I use my motivational speeches because I, I had a fun way of using my fight experience and relating it to life. Um, you know, when I agree to take a fight, that's somebody's way of agreeing to their goal. Um, and that's setting, setting this, okay, like I, I'm going to fight in eight weeks and I use that analogy. So the book takes all the fighting analogies and being in the ring and, and training and relating that back to everyday life. So me taking a fight is the readers, um, agreeing to a goal or a challenge. And then the, you know, the next thing in, in and I'm not gonna give you the whole book, but the next thing in a fight is my coach sits down and we talk about the game plan. You know, this is the training we have to do. And this is how, you know, much, this is how much weight you have to lose and where you need to be in the total game plan to win the fight. And then I tell the reader, this is what you need to do. You need to backwards map your goal. Where do you need, what are the steps? And I help the book helps the, the reader, um, go from, determining they want to do something all the way to finishing it and putting them in the mindset of the reader. Um, at the time it was written for college age. Um, but it, so it's written at, at the college level, but anybody it's easy to follow. Um, I was speaking to college women at the time. So we wrote it specifically at the, for them, but any reader can pick it up, get through it probably in a week and be on the, on the, on the road to living life like a champion. The second book, um, probably a, like six or seven months after my first book came out, I started hearing from all these women talking about like overcoming cancer and, and how they're now running triathlons or, um, one girl got her legs and her hands amputated and she's now, uh, a lifeguard at the beach. And so like all these things of like overcoming these. And I was like, you guys need your own books. And I was like, wait a minute. So I took 11 of their stories that were really inspirational and I put them in a book and then I put their stories in a story. So the reader can relate to each of these girls on some level, like this one, like you know, getting, like having faith. And this whole story is about having faith. So where can you have faith? So once again, the second book is, is more directed to the reader. 
podcast about how they can overcome how how these are some setbacks and and it happens to all of us and how we can move forward. Um, and then I took the, all those books and I wrote, um, dream chaser and it was more for parents to teach their kids about goal setting. And so like, um, the story starts out with a little five-year-old who's like, I want to be an astronaut. And the mom's like, okay, well, what does an astronaut need? And he's like, I need a ship. And so they're like, okay, let's build one. What do we need to build a ship? And so it's like teaching the kid, like, oh, there's steps to goals and there's steps to, to doing things. And so they build their spaceship and then they spend rest of the day, you know, traveling to the stars. And then he's like, I want to be a pirate. And she's like, okay, what does a pirate need? He's like, I need a ship. And so they take like the couch cushions from all over the house and they build this magical pirate ship and they go on a magical pirate journey. But the book is again to like, uh, for parents to read to their kids about goal setting and, you know, anything's possible. You just need to know the steps and what do we do to make this happen? And as the boy in the book gets older, the goals get older and they get more mature and the steps become more, um, like he wants to be the president. She's like, okay, you got to study more. Like they become more age appropriate towards realistic goals. Um, and then my last one is called sit and sing. And then, um, and then at the conference, I I forgot about, uh, happy. I met a girl named Danny at the conference you were at and she asked, yeah, she asked if I'd co-write a book with her and we wrote a book called happy. And, uh, it talks about how, how people get in their own way of happy. And so, yeah, we, and that hit a bestseller. So yeah, that hit bestseller too. So we wrote, um, yeah. So I I have that co-written with Danny. That, from that's, the conference. That's yeah. awesome. And I'll, I'll have all the links to all these books, including uh, the one with Danny DeNovo right there in uh, in the show notes. So you guys can check them all out. They all sound tremendous. And, and do you hear what she has done with this this book writing process? Well, her first book, she started with something she knew and was giving tips on how to get yourself on to that to that next level. And she says, oh, OK, well, I can write something because there's some very powerful stories that you hear on the circuits uh, when you're going out speaking and you're hearing other people tell their life stories and you get a collection of them together and put that out there to improve people. You have, you have a children's book, uh, sit and sing, you have a book about happiness, you know, you know, so you're, you're a prolific writer, obviously. So, so what are you working on right now? Um, so I actually, okay. So I own, um, I'm the the owner of victory publishing where I own a publishing company. Um, but victory is dedicated to helping people become victorious in their life. So we, we, um, I, I focus a lot of my time on helping other people reach their goals and coaching them and encouraging them. So victory has a book writing, um, coaching program. Um, we have a, uh, starting 2020, what year are we in 2023? Um, we'll have a, like a subscription based, um, where you can, you can subscribe and you get me and videos helping you along the way, or we have, um, We have uh, mastermind groups that come together that help you write your books. And then you have one-on-one coaching um, with me and there's three other coaches. So um, doing a lot of coaching and helping other people make their dreams come true. Um, I am writing another book uh, and it's just in the beginning process. Um, I'm writing a book about what I wish what we wish, uh, I'm getting 10 to 15 women entrepreneurs and we're writing what we wish we were told at the beginning. So the idea of this book is somebody, uh, a female entrepreneur or a woman who's sitting in a cubicle at work who wants to kind of like branch out, like, like encouraging them to do it, encouraging them to take those steps. And some of just the wisdom that we've, we've gathered along the way about the ups and the downs and, and getting punched and getting back up and, and all that stuff. So, um, I'm currently in the process of the beginning process of writing that, um, while focusing on, um, victory and helping other women and men. Um, we're not, we're not sexist. We, we, we (laughs) do both men and women. Um, help write their book. So, um, yeah, we, yeah, basically coaching and writing and climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. 
Wow. <laughs> All of that sounds like something, something fun. I mean, one, one thing you just sharing stories, you're actually helping other people publish their books and tell their story, which is both therapeutic and empowering. Mm-hmm. And, and well, Hey, why not put Mount Kilimanjaro on there right. on the list? Well, I have to have- I have to have a personal goal. So the personal goal for me, I have to push myself. Like I did a triathlon. Um, I was supposed to do another one this year, but again, health reasons and not having a right hand for the longest time kind of set back that. Um, so thank God we don't need my hands for Kilimanjaro. Um, (laughs) <laughs> just walk. Um, so my personal, and, and I always like my, who I am, my, I, my new, I'm not a fighter. I could be still a fighter or whatever, but my new persona or whatever is I want to encourage people to try something new. So every year I'm trying something new. Um, and then just, if I can, my, my uncle did the triathlon because I was like, he was like, if you can do it, I can do it. And you encouraged me. And I was like, that's what I want. So I want to be the champion for trying new things. And I, my, my biggest thing is suck at something new. Who cares? Like we're all scared. Like <laughs> you're not going to be a pro fighter. The first day you go to jujitsu, you are going to suck. And the thing is, we all know it. We all know when you walk in that you're going to suck. And we like that. We are like, okay, this person's trying something new, but sometimes our egos are like, oh my God, I'm terrible. And everyone's laughing at me. No, bro. We know you're going to be terrible your first day at anything. At, Cause I'm with the circus too. And we like, we encourage you to, we say, come, come suck today. Come suck at something new. Like <laughs> you will not be, I don't know why. Like people are scared to be terrible at something, but that's how you, what? when that's you were two years old, you were terrible at walking and you didn't give up. Kept right? going. You kept you going. You kept going. And now look at you, you're running. Right? Like <laughs> just just suck at something new today. <laughs> I hey, and if that's something you can take with you, fire starters, make that a goal. Write it down on this day, in this week. Suck at something new. Yeah. And right now <laughs> I still suck at standing on the edges of cliffs and looking down. <laughs> I can't, I'm going to get better though. I'm getting better. I'm getting yeah. closer and closer and closer. And that's what we have to keep getting, giving ourselves. And until, until I can, you know, maybe get a bronze medal in that and then aspire. Standing to on the cliffs. Medal. Yes. Come put my Christmas tree lights up and you can practice standing on the edge of my roof. Cause I'm scared <laughs> of heights too. And um, I'm, I'm not getting up there anytime soon. I do have, um, I have like one more tidbit of like, like trying something new. Um, one thing that really pushed me to, to achieve things is the word, but like B U T. Cause every time we're like, Oh, I want to do something, but I don't have enough money. I want to do something, but I don't have time. I trained myself to every time I heard myself say the word, but I followed it with how, and automatically that changed it from a negative to a positive. I want to climb Kilimanjaro, but, but I need more training. But how, but how can I do that? Okay. I need more training. I want to, I want to, um, I want to do the triathlon, but I, but how, okay. How can I do this? So every time I heard the word, but come out of my mouth, I automatically would change it to, but how. And so it would, it took that negative, but I can't, but I don't, but I won't, but I can't. And I turned it to, but how, so it already takes, it starts that momentum going, but how, okay, well, I need to train but how I need climbing shoes, but how I need to get sponsors. So it's like, it, it changes that negative momentum instantly into a positive moving trajectory. Absolutely. And, and it would, you know, you start to think about the words that you're using as opposed to just giving yourself an automatic out right from the beginning. Ah, I'm going to do this, but such and such. And then you never think about it or you never think any more about how to do it because you've already placed an obstacle in front of you. Mm-hmm. That you say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't climb over that, that, that goal. So you, you have to think, and I like your addition of, but how, uh, a lot of times I'll catch myself saying, well, I'm trying to record this podcast episode today. No. Okay. Let's take out try. And let's just say, I am going to mm-hmm. do this and make it a more definitive, 
definitive statement. And so I love how you've used but, and if but comes out of your mouth, it's followed immediately by how, so you can get out of that cycle of putting that wall up in front of you. And you can actually see how you can build steps to climb over that wall. Yes. Excellent. I, you know, I could have you on the show all day <laughs> long, Janae, dropping these gems for the fire starters out there. But where else can people find out more about you? Um, I have Janae Noonan dot com, um, Instagram, Janae Noonan, Facebook, Janae Noonan. It's all Janae Noonan. Very simply find me. Um, yeah. Victory, Victory Book Publishing dot com. I didn't even know my own website. Victory Book Publishing dot com has all the information on if you if you if you have it in your mind to write a book, let's do it. Let's let's make 2023 the year. Let's go. Um, yeah, so victorybookpublishing.com, com, and all the socials are just Janae Noonan. Excellent. You have to check her out, folks, because she... She really is just a, a dynamic speaker. You see, she knows a lot about a lot of things in life. And well, some of that started with getting punched in the face, getting back up, especially describing that first punch in the face. <laughs> I hit in the face. She's supposed to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you keep on going and you keep on going and you keep on going despite the obstacles that fall into our way. And that's what this is all about, folks. Remove those obstacles, achieve some greatness and push yourself to do something new. It's OK to suck at something, but work your way until you get better. Thanks for being on the show today, Janae. Final judgment. Licensed to live. Thanks for having me. It's fun. <laughs> And remember, Firestarters, for you or anyone you know being this, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to your favorite podcast player and hit subscribe to License to Live. And while you're there, make sure that you're, you're checking us out in between times on social media. You can find me at Dr. Jarrett. Spell out the word Dr. J-A-2-R-S-E-1-T. Hanging out on LinkedIn in between the shows to see what's going on. And we will see you Next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.